Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, the simple goal is to make sure that you understand useref hook in React. Now you might be using this hook already in your production apps or your fun apps, but the goal of this video is to make sure to give you full rundown of this useref hook so that you can actually decide that what is the correct and optimized way of using it or not using it. By the end of this video, you'll get a full clarity of why this hook was designed and how to use it properly and what to expect with this hook. Now, obviously, this video is going to be a little bit longer than TikTok videos. So to all my goldfish friends, this is going to be a, bit, a little bit longer video. So stay tuned. Now, in the first part of the video, I'm going to give you some rundown of basics and theory and a little bit of discussion. And in the second half of the video, I'll take you to the computer and we'll design a very simplistic useref implementation so that you can actually understand that why this hook was designed and how you can use it. So let me first start by a simple uh, thing here that I can totally understand that no matter what tutorial you watch or what article you read, everybody compares use state and use ref hook, which is not an ideal condition and state. Because if the use state hook is north, then use ref hook is actually south. They can be considered quite almost an opposite. And I'll take you on to that. And again, remember I said almost opposite, not entirely. So I'll come back onto this a little bit later in the code part. Now, before we move there, First thing that you need to understand is a little bit of history. This history will help you to understand this use ref hook. So history lesson. So in the time when this React thing was not even present on the internet, still applications were being designed in the JavaScript. Now, one of the core concept, in case you have followed my JavaScript series on YouTube as well, one of the thing we used to do and still do in the JavaScript is that there are so many elements on a web page, buttons, input forms, list item and bunch of other things as well. Now, sometimes we might want to manipulate these items. So we use something known as get element by ID, get element by class and get element XYZ. And we used to take reference of those particular elements from the web page or DOM elements and store them in the variable. Now, these variables were later on being used to change CSS, to add siblings, to add a child to that component and a whole lot of things. Now, this practice is really, really deep rooted and still a lot of developers take advantage of this quite a lot. Now, the only issue with this approach was that whenever you do any manipulation or something, it just re-renders the entire DOM element and there were so many issues that use, we used to handle via other variables and stuff. Now, with the came, when the React came into the picture, a lot of things got changed and that is why this useRef hook was designed because so far, there is no easier way of giving a reference of that element and holding that in a variable so that you can manipulate it or pass on to another component. So the core ingredient of this use ref hook is to store the reference of an element. Remember, I said element, not the value. For the value, we use this use state hook. Now, another major thing that you need to make sure that you always remember is that use state hook is responsible for re-rendering that particular DOM element. But in the case of use ref hook, your DOM element, any of the DOM element, no matter how many changes you are making in use ref, it never re-renders it. And I'm not saying it, this is right here in the documentation. And you can see it says that keep in mind that useRef doesn't notify you when its content changes. Mutating the dot current property doesn't cause a re-render. I'll come on to this dot current in a minute, but you get this idea of how and what it is saying. Now, another thing that you need to understand is, let's compare it with the use state. In the use state hook, you can actually create any initial value, null, zero, any string, any object, not in the case of use ref. Just remember this one more thing, that use ref returns a mutable reference object. Object, very important. And this object has just one property in it, dot current, which you can use it to initialize it and do a whole lot of things. So hold to a summary of this. Whenever a use ref hook comes up, you need to just remember two things. First, that it is an object and that object has a dot current value that you can access, simply dot current. Second thing, that use ref never, 
never ever re-renders the DOM element, no matter how many times you manipulate it, just do anything with that. Although you can use useref hook to store values and stuff, but that is not what it is designed for. For that, we have already got state, use a state, and that is why we actually do all the manipulation with the numbers and values, basically variables in that hook. Now that you understand these couple of things, now let me take you onto the computer, give you a simplest and basic example. Now one more thing before we go there, you're gonna notice that in the documentation they say input element.current.focus. So just because in the documentation they have shown you one property dot focus doesn't mean every tutorial need to talk just about the focus. Every article on medium dev all just talk about focus. But I'm gonna give you a different example so that you can get more open eye view on why this is here and what actually you can do with it. So now let's go ahead, move on to computer. Okay, so this is the barebone React app. Whenever you create npx create React app, this is what you get. Absolute basics, I haven't even touched it yet. Now let's move on to the code file and this is all running up and running. So what we're gonna do now is if I open my index.js, this is where an app is being imported and is being rendered. So this is kind of a very basics we have seen. I'm not gonna be creating too much here to make sure that we focus on just the user ref. So I'm gonna go ahead and just comment this out. And instead of bringing up this, I'm gonna go ahead and simply say, hey, you're gonna get this app variable directly from here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, I can just go ahead and say return. And there we go. In the return, let's go ahead and put up a simple h2 that says uh, LCO. And I'm also gonna go ahead, make sure it doesn't collapse on itself. I'm gonna go ahead and say a span, and I'm gonna say hi. Just add a space. Let's save this one and see how is it looking like. So probably I need to do a refresh and we see LCO high. So this is working fine. There is nothing too much we have done. Now, since we're gonna be talking about use ref and use state, just put a comma and bring them up right up here. So first thing we're gonna talk about is use state. The second one is use ref. Okay, now how we're gonna talk about them in order to talk more about them, we need to create a specific scenario because otherwise talking about it just would be theory. So let's create a specific scenario. We're gonna create two inputs here. So rather than have this, let's create an empty element here. There we go, nice and easy. And in here, first, I'm gonna go ahead and put up a simple h2, and I'm gonna just put up any text up here. Doesn't matter. And now we're gonna have an input box. Now notice the scenario, the first input box is actually a number, so we have got this. We actually technically don't need name and ID since we won't be doing much up here, so that is the most basic. But there's gonna be few things we are going to enter here. The first thing is that there is going to be a value here. So what this value actually is going to hold up? Right now, nothing. Whenever we need to hold value, and to manipulate those values, this is where the use state hook is being used. So let's go ahead and create a simple uh, state up here. And as I mentioned, these states are really simple. So we go ahead and create an array, and this is how we use state. So we're gonna simply say use state. We provide an initial value, let's say a number, probably zero. The first argument in this array is actually my num, which can be any variable. And the second argument is a a method, you can call this one as Superman. Nobody is gonna be bothering you, but the ideal good practice is to call it as set my num. But again, feel free to call it anything. Now what is going to happen is, whatever the value comes set into this, I just want to go ahead and use state for that. And that is usually the ideal case. That is how you should be doing the things. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, just use two input boxes up here first so that we can talk more onto this later on. So go ahead, copy this, and we are gonna have another input box up here. Okay, no problem, we can have the input box. Now we are also going to go ahead and have a simple H3 here. So let's go ahead and have an H3 after this. And we're gonna simply say value is, and just after that, we're gonna inject a variable, and the variable name is gonna be my num. So whatever we are going to change the value in the input box will be displayed up here, but there's a little bit more to it. We are also going to need two buttons here. So we're gonna go ahead and say, I need two button, button. And the first one is gonna say rupees. I'm really come running out of the names here, so I'm gonna just name them as rupees and dollars. Okay, no problem. 
Now, obviously, we have buttons, so bear with me a little bit more. We are going to need two of the methods as well. So, let's go ahead and manipulate the things now. This was an input for number. This is going to be an input for text. Okay, interesting. Now, let's create two simple, very simple methods up right at the top. The first one is going to be saying get num box. And this is going to be a simple method just like this. We have created this so many. And in all of them, we are going to simply go ahead and simple, let's just say hello. And there's going to be another one which is going to say get text box. And this is going to say probably world. Okay. Now, just bear with me. Here, we want to have an on click. So we're going to have an on click. There we go. Just like this. And we are going to go ahead and say that I want to run one method on one, another one here. So we're going to simply say get num box. And there we go. We run that. We can actually go ahead and copy that. Again, I get you. There are a couple of other ways of handling the on click. Feel free to use the other one if you like that. Okay, quite a lot of manipulation that we have done and we are not using this input values, but still we are going to get there in a second. First, let's see that how this is looking like on the web page. So on the web page, you can see that this is a number box. So I can go ahead and increase that value or decrease that value, but it's not working. It will work in a second, just a minute. This is also a string, so I can just enter zero or one or anything, but this is also not working. And let's open up the console log as well so that we can see that. And here we are going to go ahead and say rupees and dollars. So these are working. Why these are not working? Because we haven't assigned a value to them yet. So how we can actually go ahead and do that? We can assign an on change property on them. So we're going to say on change. What should happen on the change? You are obviously going to receive an event. And whenever you're going to receive an event, you're going to run a method. This method is responsible for manipulating this variable, which is my num. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to simply say my set my num. And inside this method, we're going to take this event, which is going to have a target dot value. So once I have this one, I can actually go ahead and use the exact same thing onto this input as well. Now you might be wondering, okay, okay, this is getting intense. Wait a second. So save this. And now we have a very simple example up here. I can actually go ahead and manipulate this. And this is not working. And this is not working because we probably need to hit a reload. And uh, let's just see. Yeah, now it's working. Somehow this is not getting an auto reload, but not to be bothered much. Now we are able to change that. And notice here, one text box is number, one is string. Still both of them get our values because they are both controlled by single state. Importantly, the thing that you should understand that whenever there is a value being changed, use state is actually responsible for re-rendering the element. And that is the biggest difference here. Now, coming up onto the meat part of the thing that now let's use the another hook, which is use ref and see what actually it does. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to say input one is going to have a use ref. And since we have two input boxes this time, we're going to go ahead and say input two. And that is also going to have a use ref. And you might be curious to know, and you should be curious, that what is inside this input. In case you noticed on the doc page documentation, it was clearly mentioned that use ref returns a mutable object whose dot current property is initialized. But I'm not bothered about current. I want to see what is totally there in this input. So I'm going to go ahead and say that whenever the num box is being clicked on, I want to have a reference of this. So I'm going to go ahead and console log this input one here. Let's see what happens. Okay. Nice. Since it's not auto reloading, I'm going to hit a reload. And now let's click on repeat. And I notice that it gives me an object here which says current. And there is only one thing. And it says undefined. If I open this up, it says, hey, this is totally undefined. There is nothing up here. Okay. That's okay. The reason why it is totally undefined, because you have created the variable, you are using it, but there is one more thing that you need to worry about. Use ref is actually designed to store the reference. So it can be actually attached to any input form, any button, any uh, heading, whatever you like. So let's go ahead and now use this. 
So we're going to simply say that there is a ref and now this ref is going to be for input one. Okay, this is being done interestingly. Now let's see what manipulation it does when I click on the button this time. I'm going to click on rupee and now it says, hey, now we have some value onto this one. The current value is input. If I open this up and I can see there's a lot going on in here. So rather than kind of a destructuring up here, I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to display the value of input one dot current. This destructuring is going to make much more sense. Let's go ahead and hit a reload. And this time when I click on rupee, now we can see, now this is the most important part of this entire video. When I click on this, I now hold a reference of this entire input element. And I can do all of my manipulation that I'm supposed to do in my JavaScript world earlier and I can do all of this up here. So this is the most important thing to notice down here. But I can understand that this is not going to give you much clarity. So let me give you more clarity on that. So now we have input two as well. So we're going to go ahead and take this one that, hey, this reference is going to be holded by inside this input. So we're going to go ahead and say this is my reference for input two. So I have two input boxes two references being held up by that and this this time we're going to go ahead and say let's console log this one up here but instead of input one we're going to go ahead and say input two quick summary now we are having two references each reference goes for each input box and they are being controlled by two different buttons so when i go back up here and hit a quick reload whenever i say rupee the input type is number which is holding a reference in the rupees and when I click on dollars the input type hold it up here is the text and I can do all the manipulations up here just to give you a brief example and not to give you example for the focus let me tell you what additionally you can do I can go ahead and say that uh, let's go ahead and do some styling here because that's gonna make much more sense so this is my input box it doesn't have any styling yet here I'm gonna go ahead and say that you're going to have some styling so styling nothing much but your width is going to be a hundred come on like that hundred pixels and I'm gonna remove this input for a second and let's see how this is looking like so I'm gonna go up here hit a reload and notice here the box is a little bit shorter I do hold a reference in this button so what additionally I can do since all the reference is stored up here I can use my regular JavaScript up here to say simply input dot current and I can go ahead and manipulate my styling, append child, whatever I really want to do, I can just go ahead and do that. But in this case, I'm gonna simply add a styling of width and this width is going to be, let's just say a little bit more, 400 pixels. So you get the idea that why this reference is being done. So go ahead and hit a reload up here and it says input, yep, it should be input one. Save that. And there we go. Now what's going to happen? Currently it's having a hundred pixel of width. When I click on rupees, since I store this reference, now the width is actually 400. I hope you can understand there can be more use case scenario. But the most important thing is, since this hook is saying onto the docs that this actually stores the current, but as well as the most important thing, it doesn't cause a re-render. So you can do a lot of things here. Let me summarize the things here. Use ref is actually designed to store the reference of the element. You can store the reference for input elements, for button, pass them into the component as a child, and also the most important thing, it doesn't re-render. You can actually use it to store the past state and past values. That's possibly a use case, but that is not why it was actually designed for. This was designed to pass on a reference, do manipulation based on the reference, add childs, append childs, whatever you really want to do. And that is, my friend, a classic example of use reference. I know this was a little bit longer, but creating these two input boxes, two separate buttons will give you much more clarity about what kind of reference we are holding and why and how we can use it. I know the video was a little bit longer, but I hope it gave you much more clarity. And now you will be able to use this use ref in the production much more optimally. So in case you enjoyed this video, consider hitting subscribe. Otherwise, no problem. You can hit it later on as well. And we're going to catch up in the next video.